Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk about a very interesting topic but I'm gonna do it a little bit low-key today and it's not a very advanced topic but I think we need to at least tell you, I need to tell you that it exists. So I have an interest in Ceph because we are running that at work and I also wanted to implement it at home. And behind me here, you can see uh, a number of machines. Uh, that is my little Ceph cluster. And if we switch over here to uh, an, an image that I have, this is the two machines that I currently have for my Ceph cluster. The uh, left-hand side, you have a Raspberry Pi, which I implemented with the kit from Geekworm in the United States, came from China. It uh, took a long time to actually deliver it over to me and uh, this kit is actually more expensive than that computer that you see on the right hand side uh, which has a lot more power. So I have an old Raspberry Pi 3B uh, on the left hand side and I'm trying to build Ceph for that because on ARM you have old Ceph packages but not new ones. And I wanted a new one, so I need to build them, and it takes over a week to build that on a Raspberry uh, Pi. On the other hand, the M machine um, there is some kind of a Pentium or x86 machine that were had Windows 10 installed, and it has three, uh, four gigs of memory and some disk space and so on. So it's quite nice, and you also have an extra bay so you can put in an extra um, uh, disk into it. So I have a lot of the disk space in it extra. So if you want to build your own Ceph cluster and you want to be do it cheaply in order to test things out, look at the market if you can find a PC that is uh, of the kind that it has multi-juice for larger offices. So this machine that you saw in the image is a machine that you usually set on the back of a monitor and can be used on places where you need thin clients because you perhaps only use some very um, uh, thin software or software that doesn't really need that much CPU. It just needs the uh, utility for a lot of different people. So uh, that could be an, a, a way to look at this. So what I want to talk about today is how you can use a Windows machine and connect to a Ceph cluster because that has not been possible earlier uh, because uh, earlier you only have Linux machine that connected to a Ceph cluster and just in this new release of 16.2.0 of Ceph you actually have the possibility to connect with a Windows client and that's done via, via Dokken which uh, is a library for this. So if we switch over to our screen here you can see that I have an, a page for this installation and Dokken is the drivers that you need for this Windows install. So if we open up this in a new tab or in, uh, open it up here and then open up Dokken in a new tab and Ceph for Windows in a new tab. So this is a git repository and you have some uh, build built files here so I will download one of those and then we also have this set for Windows that could be found at Cloudbase. So they have built it for us. So there you have Ceph 16.0.0 for Windows. So I will download that as well. So those two packages makes it possible for us to configure and connect uh, via to our Ceph cluster. And Dokken is just drivers to crea create Fuse uh, file systems in Windows. So these drivers are required by the other install wizard. So I will install that and see if uh, it, yeah, I still see things on the screen. If I do that in my local machine, it actually hangs during the, uh, uh, for the recording software. But I, I'm in a virtual machine now, so I install that and then I will install this Ceph for Windows and accept the uh, license agreement. I will install everything, just do it. And this will give me the possibility to add uh, a configuration file to my Windows machine 
and a local key uh, in a, a directory. And when you have configured it, you just run uh, Ceph Doken and that will create a drive letter for you into the Ceph cluster. And then you just use it as usual, uh, which is really nice um, and very smooth. So uh, let's see here if it has installed. If we open up a file uh, explorer here, we need to do some adjustments to get started. I don't think we need the web browser anymore. And it asked me to install here. So this should be done quite soon. If we go in here, first off, we need to, uh, yeah, that's finished. And you see here, you need to add a, a file to program data, ceph, ceph.conf. And if we go to C here, C drive, we can see that we don't see that in our options here. We don't have a program data. So if we click on view up here, we get this little bar up here and we can say we want to see file name extensions and we want to see hidden items. And when we do that, we will see this program data. And Microsoft has hidden these features just because if you have users that are not um, that uh, into the system and knows a lot about uh, Windows and how to manage things, they can be confused by some files. I actually have a friend that isn't that into PCs and uh, had this feature turned on and he did it, uh, went into the Windows directory and deleted some large files because he wanted more disk space. And that didn't end well. We needed to reinstall that machine in order to get it to work again. And so uh, it's good that they hide these features. So if we go into the Ceph directory here, we have a possibility to add the configuration file here. So I will do that. And, and when I create a text file, I can change it to ceph.conf like that change it up and I will edit that file. See here, uh, notepad, and I will look here, I will switch over so I have this configuration and copy that in. So here we have the global configuration that says that you should log all standard errors out. You can also say that you want to log them to syslog. You have some run and crash directories where you will put data and then we point out a specific key ring. We need to have an admin socket. So those have specific PID files over here and we can also have a log file so we see what uh, the errors might be. And if we need client permissions, we will turn those on here. And at the moment I have not turned that feature on in uh, my Ceph cluster, but uh, if you do that, you just uncomment these lines. And then I need to tell it what host uh, I want to run. In this case, I say host uh, node two, and that's the name of my machine. So we will save that and uh, close that. We also need to create this key ring. So we do that, key uh, ring like that. And I will open it and copy over the key ring material. So this should, you should be able to fetch this from your cluster. And now that I have the key ring and the configuration data, you saw that I turned, put in that I wanted the host uh, to be node two. So that's the name of my host. But Windows don't know about that host because my DNS has not set up that host. So let's look at how to add a host to Windows. And again, this is for more advanced users. So if we go into the Windows directory and we find the system32 directory and then we go into the drives directory and then etc. So it's very similar to the Linux environment that you have an etc directory with all your configurations. Here I have a host file. If I open that in Notepad again, you see here I can define the different hosts in my configuration. And I know the IP of my host here is number 18 in my network, and I will give it the name node two. If I save this 
and try to save it in this directory, it tells me you can't save that there, you don't have the permissions, do you want it to be saved in my documents folder instead? Yeah, I can do that and I will save it in my documents folder. This is a little bit annoying in Windows, but now I need to open up my documents folder in a new window here. I need to change the name of this host file, so it's just hosts, and then copy it back to etc. And I want to replace it at the destination. And here I can say I want to do this with system admin privileges. So just um, write over that file. So now I have the host file knows about node 2 and I have my uh, Ceph Doken configuration done. And now I will type cmd as in command prompt. Uh, here, search that up and start a command prompt. And here I can run Ceph Doken dash L and X, which will be my drive letter. So the letter, drive letter I want is X. And that's all that you need to do. Now I have a mount point X here. If I open up my um, file explorer again, you see I have an X colon here. And here I have some data that I previously have added to my Ceph cluster. So it's not that hard to get that to work. They say that this is very much in beta at the moment, it's not done. They still working on uh, ironing out all the different issues that might occur with this, but it's very encouraging uh, that uh, they are working on it and in a future version we will have full Windows support uh, hopefully with a gr great installer and uh, similar things that you just can configure vi via a GUI or something what you want uh, set up in your environment and then you can just load data into Ceph cluster. Uh, so perhaps we can use Windows machines as servers in the future uh, if this goes well. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.